Right oh, no, so these honeybees here are literally cleaning up. So this bucket, honey bucket, is destined for the rubbish bin because the handle broke and all the outsides perished. And so I've got my grandson here, Daniel, uh, watching on and um, we've got some birds in the background waiting for a feed of honey nectar. Yeah, I'm still here. It's amazing what they can do, how they can sort of, uh, the ones working on the roof of the bucket, how they can sort of flap their wings and, and get the honey at the same time. Yeah. They work hard at it. Yeah. Seeing how hard they have to work to get their honey, uh, I don't think I'd want to be a honeybee. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I can get close enough to show you, uh, if you can see it, but these honeybees have specially designed uh, hooks on their legs. Now, now those hooks are there so they can make beeswax. So what they do is they make a bee ladder and they hang off each other, um, you know, in lines of about six or eight. Uh, and the top bees on the ladder eat a lot of honey, so they fill up their stomach with honey. And after about 24 hours, they start to produce wax out of their wax glands. And they can't do that unless they've got the weight of the other bees hanging on their body. So it's so one bee, uh, one bee by itself can't make beeswax. So it needs to be a combined effort of you know, quite a few bees uh, all hanging off each other. And then once that group of bees produces the wax, there's other bees there to collect the wax to mix with their saliva to to build the honeycomb. So they all work together. Um, in harmony for the good of the hive. Uh, they say that the human race could learn a lot from honeybees, but if the human race uh, lived the way honeybees lived, that it'd be a ruthless society. Uh, the honeybees don't exercise any uh, pension plans. Uh, if there's a, a honeybee that's deformed or, or something wrong with it, uh, it'll be done away with straight away. They get rid of any sick bees. They just uh, the younger, healthy ones just pick them up and cart them away and uh, drop them off, so they can't make it back to the hive. So if a bee gets too old to work, uh, yeah, because it's been working flat out to the hive, it's been and its wings get a bit tattered and torn. A younger bee will just pick it up, take it away, and then drop it off so that the old bee can't make it back to the hive. Uh, invariably, that could have been the bee that was nurse feeding the larvae, so, uh, so the young bee that did the, ca that, that did the carrying away, when it was in the larval stage, the bee that actually got carried away may have been the nurse bee that was feeding that young bee. That's <laughs> very ruthless. Now, if the queen bee doesn't perform to the bee's expectation, she'll get done away with. So they'll just uh, kill, the, uh, kill the queen when she gets a bit sluggish. They'll just kill her and uh, supersede her and make a new queen. So, very ruthless society, <laughs> but uh, but that's just but it works and uh, works good for them. And uh, but I don't think a human society could work like that. What do you reckon? Yeah. 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 Now, uh, now there's another thing to add. Now. Daniel and, and I are standing here uh, watching these bees feeding. We could probably sit here all day uh, and watch these bees feeding and not get worried by the bees.
because all these bees are interested in is getting their honey and taking them back to the hive. Now, we've had a fair bit of rain here the last few days, so, uh, so because there's not much coming into the hive, the bees get quite um, protective of their hive. So if Daniel and, Daniel and I were sitting next, this close to the entrance, entrance of their hive, we could be in a bit of trouble. <laughs> We'd probably get attacked, I'd say. There's a good chance of that. We'd get attacked and stung. Yeah, they're still working on this bucket here. Uh, what I did was I rotated the bucket around. It's making it a bit easier for them. So they're not trying to get the honey off the ceiling. <laughs> so, every now and again you'll get a couple of bees will start squabbling. and yeah, Like two of them are doing now. Uh, getting into a death struggle. Very close now, you can see those hooks on their legs I was talking about. On their feet, um, where they hang off each other to make the wax. Uh, as long as you've got honey in their stomach, they can flap those wings all day. They can just, they can just flap them and flap them as long as they like, until they wear them out. Uh, they put those wings to good use. Um, in the summertime, the bees bring, uh, w when it's really hot, the bees bring water back to the hive and deposit the water in uh, strategic positions so that the bees all in a group, um, they position themselves in a, in a strategic position so they can air condition the hive by vaporizing that water. So um, you can see if you've got a wide entrance on your hive, you can, on a real calm day, you could have a candle uh, up against one side of the entrance and the, the flame will be drawn in and it'll be uh, blown out the other way. So, so it'll sort of circulate the air to go in, in one side of the hive and out the other side and you'll pull your frames of honey out and there'll be holes in the side or down the bottom or near the top and I've just come to the conclusion that they put those holes there for a reason so they can circulate the air through the hive so if you pull that frame out and put it in the wrong way around you've upset their airflow so uh, and then, then they have to um, remake those holes so that's one of the reasons why I don't like plastic um, plastic foundation at least with the with the wax they can make the holes to suit themselves and so they can get that airflow through the hive which is pretty important uh, you can see here that just about cleaned it up now they're sort of walking all over the bucket looking for honey and uh, I'm going to make myself a cuppa and come back and see what it's like then. Yeah, there's a couple of bees here engaging in a nice little wrestle here. So, uh, yeah, they carried it out outside. <laughs> oh dear. So, I don't know, they broke up. So, uh, so you can see the they're wandering all over the bucket trying to find honey now. As you can see now the numbers are dropping so they've cleaned it all up so it won't be long and I'll be able to put this bucket in the rubbish bin. So, hello, we've got a blue face. The blue face honey eaters are back. Put some nectar out there for them. So, uh, so they're back. Anyway, I'll close now, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye.